We've all seen these day in the life videos where apparently people in the software industry eat, they eat, they pet a dog or cat, and they eat some more. That may be true for some of us, but for the vast majority of us in software, that's not what our job looks like at all. So today we're gonna to talk about what you can expect your first year on the job. Hi everybody, it's Real Tough Candy back online with you guys today. I got this question on my Discord the other day from Fernando. This is a guy I featured on the channel a few weeks ago. I featured his portfolio, we did a portfolio review, but he's coming back. He wants to know, what are we actually gonna be doing as web developers once you get into the real world? Well, I wanna offer this video not just to web developers, but if you're an app developer, iOS, Android, if you are a traditional desktop software person, ooh, we kind of still make that stuff, right? That's not related to the web. Some of us still do that. Whatever you're doing, game development, any type of development job that involves going like this and thinking about problems, I think this video applies to you. If you don't have a lot of time for today's video, here's what we talk about in a nutshell. Culture shock, learning mode, and leveling up. Let's talk about the first one. Culture shock is something you normally read about in tour guides if you're going overseas to travel. Uh, if you're a student in college about to do some sort of learning experience overseas or doing an exchange program, you don't really hear about that culture shock in the tech industry. But don't be fooled. There is a distinct culture for every business out there, no matter who you decide to work for, that place has its own culture. And as a newbie transitioning, your first, not only day, not only week, not only month, your first couple months, even, even that full year you're on the job, everything is new. And this is shocking to a lot of us because we are so used to using our machine, using our code editor of choice, and even the projects we choose to build, whether it's on Udemy, through a book, these are projects that we chose ourselves and we're deciding every choice that is made with this software. That is the complete opposite of what you'll find on the job because you're using a computer. You might even be using a, an operating system that you've never used before. All your peripherals are gonna be different too. If you're used to working on a laptop with the little trackpad, you're probably gonna be using a mouse at work uh, for ergonomical purposes. Even your chair, everything that you do is totally new and this is a shock. It takes some getting used to and this is the real world code. So now that's the other shocking thing is that everything you do is related to a business purpose. This isn't just for fun, this isn't just for leveling up your skills, but whether you're doing, working on a legacy project that has a lot of jQuery on it, or doing something completely bleeding edge, everything you do has a financial value attached. And that can be a shock as well, uh, because you also don't have the luxury of spending three or four days perusing Stack Overflow or taking a leisurely pace to solve these problems. So there's a new pace, there's a new workflow, there's a new code base, there are people you're actually working with, and there's the other big cultural shock. Nobody wants to be that FNG, that freaking new guy, right? But you're that person and all eyes are on you. So there is that added sense of anxiety because you know people are looking at you. Different code blocks may have been edited by 20, 30 people over the course of its life, maybe more, maybe less, maybe more but everything is just so new and that takes a while and it is shocking. So be prepared to be shocked, be prepared to be put in situations that are new and uncomfortable. If you don't feel a bit uncomfortable your first year on the job, I think you're doing it wrong because there's always something new and like, oh, really, we, we do it like this? This is, this is how we do it? Let's, all right, so we talked about culture shock. Let's talk about this learn mode because this is the mode you're gonna be in your first year on the job, maybe even past that first year, depending on your organization. You were hired as a junior, not because of your expansive experience, but because you proved to people, you convinced them that you can add some sort of value to that company. That being said, you are not expected to know everything. And in fact, one of the worst things you can do is not ask questions and act like you do know it all because eventually that will catch up with you. And eight months down the road when you don't know how to do a Git cherry pick when that's a standard practice in your shop, that might be a problem and it might catch up with you. What I did at my first developer job, I worked at an IBM partner company. It was a data company uh, that did enterprise web development. 
I had a big notebook, like the junior high five subject Mead trapper keeper status notebook. And I would carry it everywhere to meetings, to just chat with my senior if I had a question. Every minute I was at work and it was by my side the entire time I was at that company because there was always something to learn. And you will be in learning mode this first year. So absolutely do not be afraid to ask questions. You're gonna be expected to produce some value. That's why they hired you. But they also understand that you're new and you do need some training. So do not be bashful. It's okay to be that person who's raising their hand every two seconds. I like being that annoying person because I know the earlier I get that out of the way, the better I'm gonna be at my job. And this is especially true as time goes on. And if you don't clear up these, these concepts and these questions early on, it will 100% of the time catch up with you. After that first year, you want the person who's in charge of you to sit back. They're looking at this blank sheet of paper or about to type something on a blank screen about your performance. And how nice would it be for them to say, this developer took on so much initiative, put forth so much initiative, they have a long way to go, but they learned so much and they added so much value. Now this developer knows where to go for help. This developer has written documentation. This developer knows how to find the answers. This first year that you're on the job, learn every chance you get, learn on the spot, write it down, send yourself an email. I would send emails to myself on break, um, emailing myself certain uh, code concepts that I wanted to study later that night. My job was very tough. Uh, it wasn't your run-of-the-mill developer job. I was in a senior position as a junior. I've talked about this in a few different videos, but it was very stressful in addition to the company culture being pretty dysfunctional. But I wanted to give them a chance and I wanted to give myself a chance and I knew I needed to do this and just stick it out. But no matter who employs you, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid that you're annoying or inconveniencing someone. Sure, there may be that gatekeeper who is very annoyed that you ask how to do things or you ask a question twice. You know, forget them. Find somebody in your group who's nice, who wants to help new people, who wants to see you succeed. Ask them for help. Yes, you have a supervisor that you report to, but you don't have to ask them for every single question. You don't have to ask them for help every single time. Find that person who's nice and wants to help you and stick with them because they're gonna get you where you need to be. The third big thing you can expect as a developer that first year is to level up. I keep a journal and I've kept one since I was in grade school and as you can imagine, over the years, I've been able to keep track of my wins. Some losses, some not so proud moments, but also I can clearly see areas in my life pinpointed to the day and sometimes to the time, the exact time by the minute when a certain thing happened. I highly encourage you to keep a journal or some other repo that tracks your progress because after that year, you may think you didn't get anything done. You're like, oh, I got paid every two weeks. I got whatever, a first year salary for a web developer, BFD. But I promise you, if you go through your journal and you read what all you're working on, what frustrated you, what you solved that day, from your go to your first day of writing that down and then go to your 365th day of writing that down, you're gonna see a huge progression and you're gonna be able to pinpoint where you really leveled up. And this is the point where you're gonna have a lot more confidence. You're gonna know you have the skills because you documented them, not just, they're not just floating out there somewhere in a 100,000 line code base. After that year, you review what all you did, you might be ready for a big raise. You might be ready for a better company. You might be ready to start freelancing on your own or doing freelancing full-time if you were doing it part-time. This is a great time to assess yourself and assess your options because once you get that first year in, remember, it's also filtering a lot of people out. A lot of people do enter this industry and end up saying, mm, I don't think this is for me or oh, I just don't like this. They're just not feeling it. But if you made it through a whole year and you say, hmm, you know, this ain't so bad. You have the world at your command. The three big things we talked about today, what to expect your first year in software development, culture shock, learning, and leveling up. 
I cannot give you technical specifics. I know some people have made it this far. I'm like, okay, what about the Vue projects? What about the React project? No, 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 no. This all depends on your company. It is totally a company decision. And anyone outside of the company telling you exactly what to expect for projects, I think is probably sniffing rubber cement. So don't listen to them. Um, they probably don't know what they're talking about. One thing you can do, however, to prepare for your role, this is a bonus tip. Don't just look at your employer's website, look at the websites of the clients they have. So for example, if you're going to go work for a digital agency, you've probably checked out their site, you've probably checked out their services, uh, but there is usually a page of like testimonials or case studies. Go visit those sites because you can pick up some patterns and see how, see the consistencies, maybe see some inconsistencies. Uh, analyze the tech stack there. That can be really helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please smash a button, leave a comment. What was your first year like as a software developer? Shout out to my patrons over on patreon.com slash realtoughcandy. I'm only a few patrons away from doing a regular exclusive video series. These are Patreon only videos uh, with really interesting topics that you guys want to hear about and seen, seen, see, sees, and see explored more. So I appreciate your patronage so much. It helps me make better and better videos. We are on our way to 100K. I'm almost at 20,000 subscribers. Oh yeah, it's coming. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.